Okay. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for jumping on with us this morning. I'm Carol Garber. I'm the education coordinator for Wyoming PBS. And um, I'm excited about um, this morning because this is a time when um, I'm not going to present my PBS material. I did that before, but I am have some guest presenters sharing and then some some other time that um, just to hear from all of you. Um, so kind of what we're going to do, uh, first of all, your mics are already muted, but you can unmute them if you want to speak. Um, I'll introduce each one of our presenters. And if you have questions, go ahead and ask them or put them in the chat. And um, but they're also all three of them are going to stay on till the end. And so you can ask more questions at that time. And also at the end, we're going to have time for any of you that want to share some tricks or tips that are working for you in your I guess, virtual classrooms right now. And also maybe any challenges that that you're facing that maybe we could just talk with with each other and share some things. And then what I would like to know is what else can we do at Wyoming PBS to help you? Um, I want to hear from you. Do you want more trainings? What would they look like um, through this? Do you need some specific resources? A one on one training with you or other people at your schools. So we'll talk about that a little bit too. Um, and so I guess we're just we'll go get ahead and get started with our first presenters. Um, so I want to introduce Karen Sullivan and Sarah Domac. I think I hope I said your name right, Sarah. Um, Karen's the education manager and Sarah's the executive director of the National Bighorn Sheep Center in Dubois. And they have some resources that they'd like to share that will hopefully be helpful to you right now. So thanks for joining us, Sarah and Karen. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. We're really excited to be here and thank you for inviting us, Carol. This is great to be able to share what we've been learning in this newly adapting uh, climate that we're all in. And we're certainly grateful for the opportunity to share some of our resources as well. Uh, so I know many of you have probably visited the National Bighorn Sheep Center in person at some point, um, or maybe when you've been passing through Little Dubois, but it's a real gem both in our local community and um, our connection with the larger uh, wild sheep world. Uh, we've been around for 27 years now. We opened our doors in 1993. So we're a real um, attraction, both in the tourism aspect of, of what brings people to Dubois and in our central mission of educating people about bighorn sheep. And uh, we do this through a variety of ways in the, in the typical fashion of our, of our programming. We do a lot of outreach with uh, school groups, with teachers and, and students from around, around the state. And then we also, um, of course, reach that tourism base between six and 7,000 people annually come through the National Bighorn Sheep Center's doors. So we're uh, reaching and spanning that age range and also the knowledge depth of, of different visitors. Um, this situation has allowed us to uh, seek new opportunities for how to reach our audience. This is typically the time of year when we have, you know, school groups coming through on field trips and usually the center is bustling with that kind of activity. We miss that, of course, and we, we, uh, we want to have that back, but Karen's been, done some really great work in uh, looking at how we can share our resources in a virtual learning setting and also expanding that out to not just the short term situation that we find ourselves in, but I've seen this as a benefit and an opportunity for us to do this for the longer term too. It's, it's stuff we should be taking advantage of anyway. And um, so I'm grateful for Karen's work on this and I'm excited to let her share some of these resources that we've been working on and how they may be accessible to all of you as teachers and, um, and we would love your feedback on them as well. So I'm gonna pass it over to Karen and she's gonna take on that next the next step here with uh, sharing some of these resources. So what um, I guess we have similar questions to Carol is, you know, we would like to help teachers and parents and students um, any way we can. So we would love some feedback as well on how we can do that better or differently if there are certain 
topic areas they need help with or certain formats that you know um, we can come up with to help them out. Um, and what I want to show you today is some of the things that we've added to our website. We've really expanded our online resources for teachers and parents. So I'll try to share my screen here. So this is what our website looks like when you initially go to it. And then from there, if you click on programs and then scroll down to education, um, there is a list of many things that we've recently added to our website. So first we have the education standards that um, we can meet with various activities that we offer. So if a teacher is looking for a certain curriculum standard that they need to work on, we've got a list of those here. And then from there, um, we've got a section of videos. So some of these are videos that we made at the Sheep Center, um, all about bighorn sheep horns, the Grand Slam display, which is what you see behind me, horns versus antlers. And I'll just show you a snippet of um, this one. This is our Sheep Eater Indian display and Tori Taylor is doing a little presentation on it. So we've got several videos Sarah, like can i but, interrupt you for a second or sorry um, is everyone i just want to make sure that everyone is is seeing the screen and stuff i got kicked off for a minute uh -oh. so i don't know if that happened to anybody else but i'm i'm back now but um just kind of you know if someone like christy are you seeing her screen and yes i am okay. so that's right. good okay thank you good <laughs> I should have asked. Um, so below the videos, there are um, different cartoons. A lot of these shared from the PBS website, Wild Kratts and Kratts Creatures. Um, there are a lot of great cartoons about animals and adaptations and animal horns. Um, then we have these other lessons and activities. There's a kind of a do-it-yourself obstacle course. And with each of the activities, I have tried to include the education standards that can be met for each grade by that activity and maybe a suggestion of how to do that if it's not, you know, completely obvious. So hopefully, you know, that's helpful. And then, let's see, so the obstacle course is kind of a fun one. And then Color Crazy is one of the new ones that we've just added. So that lesson focuses on different types of camouflage that animals have and the, the activity after it shows different types of camouflage, the activity is the students or adults, we've done this as adults and had a lot of fun with it, um, make their own creature out of things that they find outside, leaves, sticks, um, or inside art supplies, and then explain how that creature uses um, camouflage to survive in the wild. And then again, some of the curriculum standards that can be met with that activity. Karen, can I interject really quickly? Sorry. Oh, go ahead, Sarah. Sorry. Um, just to add to some of these other resources that we're providing, you know, we have done them with varying age groups and our audience is quite, like I said, it spans the breadth, but a lot of them are targeted on that, you know, third to fifth grade in that age range um, of students. So not sure all everyone's uh, backgrounds here, but uh, you can adapt these to different age groups. Go ahead, Kim. Definitely. Yeah. And then um, poetry of a big horn is one, another one we've added pretty recently that's really cross-curricular. It involves science, language arts, art. Um, so the kids could uh, draw a picture. We chose big horn, of course, but it could be any animal. They make a journal, they draw a picture of an animal, they um, write a poem about the animal, but it's not just, hey, go write a poem. There are really neat examples of different types of poetry, which I appreciated because if you tell me to go write a poem, I, I can't do that. But if you give me kind of guidelines, then it turns out to be a lot of fun. So that involves, you know, lots of different um, subjects, which is even more, more important now than ever that we make things cross-curricular. 
And then for older students, we've got this lesson called Big Horns on the Edge, and it involves population graphing um, to and uh, trying to figure out what's happened with bighorn sheep populations over time. It's got all the information a teacher or parent would need for presenting this lesson. It doesn't assume that you know people have any background in bighorn sheep. And let me pull up, there's even a PowerPoint that goes along with it with prompts, which is really nice. And then the students end up creating a graph of uh, bighorn sheep populations over time and answering questions about what has affected that population. Um, a lot of graph interpretation, I guess you'd call it. And then below that, we've got um, Wyoming Outdoor Expo at home. If you guys haven't, oh, I think I froze up there for a minute. Yeah, everybody's freezing up. Well, if you can still hear me, the Outdoor Expo at home has a ton of educational information. And then we've got activity sheets for younger students from coloring, a maze, how to draw a bighorn, um, another camouflage bighorn activity. So just a lot of information on our website. And I guess what uh, we would like is to know, I don't know, what's the best way to share all this information? What's the best way to make it uh, useful for teachers and parents? Or are there other things that we should be focusing on? And I guess any questions or comments? Or Sarah, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I would just say, you know, as we continue to expand these resources, it's a learning opportunity for all of us as far as, uh, you know, us as a nonprofit organization that does this education outreach and how we can support parents and teachers during this time. And also, you know, the, the audience that we're speaking to today, which I think spans the breadth of both parents and teachers and everyone in between, um, you know, you're the experts and you're, you're, you're determining how best to make these resources available to the people and the students that you're working with. So um, we'd love to make them as accessible as possible and also be used in a way that adds to the students learning and, you know, besides just what they can do inside and, and the lesson plans inside, you know, it's also about getting in outdoors too. And that's, that's one of the benefits we have here in Wyoming. So uh, as much as we can focus on that. So we'd welcome any, you know, comments and questions and also uh, just longer term, if you have them, we'll put our contact information in here and, and make sure you have access to that. keep getting kicked out. Can everyone hear me? <laughs> yes. Okay, I don't know why every time I touch something I, okay, um, I see that um, Karen, you put in the chat the um, website. Yes, and our email. So you can, so you can get, um, reach her there. So um, this all looks really interesting. Um, thank you for sharing. Does anybody have any questions right now before we move on? Okay, um, so next I would like to introduce Roxy Murphy. Roxy is a regional advocate, advocate for Wyoming Ag in the Classroom. She brings 20 years of classroom teaching experience and is excited to share about some of the programs the Wyoming Ag in the Classroom has to offer. She'll be giving <coughs> us some insight into the Wyoming Stewardship Project, the family learning activities, and an update on some educator workshops for this summer. So, Good morning. Good morning. And I'd like to thank Carol with Wyoming PBS for personally inviting me to share information about some of the programs that Wyoming Ag in the Classroom has to offer. While agriculture is in our name, our programs represent a much broader cross section of Wyoming to include minerals and energy, as well as outdoor rec and tourism. My name is Roxy Murphy and I am the Regional Advocate for Wyoming Stewardship Project. I served in the classroom for 23 years and I can't even begin to imagine the stress that you are all under. 
I'm excited to share with you some of the programs that are fully developed and ready for you to use. Through my presentation today, I'd like to direct you to our website. Go ahead and type in your um, Google search engine. I'm going to share my screen here. Okay, why is it not coming up here? If you want to go ahead and type in Wyoming Ag in the Classroom, and then that will bring you directly to our website. I'm going to be giving you some insight into the Wyoming Stewardship Project, the family learning activities, and our educator workshops to be held this summer. The Wyoming Stewardship, are you all seeing this? Hello? No, I yeah. you know, went to the website, so I can't no. see it on the screen, but I can. Are you on the website? Um, I'm on the website, yeah. Can you share your screen, Karen, since you're there? <laughs> and it worked for you before. Did it go? I clicked share your screen. Can you hear me? Are you hearing me? Yes. Were you able to hear any of that that I said before? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty. So the Wyoming Stewardship Project was developed for students in second through fifth grades to gain an understanding of Wyoming's vast resources and become informed citizens capable of serving as stewards for Wyoming's future. We believe that when our students really understand who we are as a state, they will grow up and be stewards themselves and show a sense of stewardship for Wyoming and the communities that they will live in. This curriculum was developed for and piloted over a five year period by Wyoming teachers all over the state. Every lesson is fully aligned to the Wyoming content and performance standards. We know a lot of you absolutely love to access lessons online and we know that you love it instantly in your hands. So let's get started. Um, Okay, but I don't have any control over my screen right now. So this is crazy here. Okay, um, Karen, could you maybe unshare and um, Roxy try sharing again? there that worked are you there can you see my screen okay so what you'll do is you will go to the programs tab on our home page and then scroll down to the wyoming stewardship project from there you can view the curriculum by clicking on the see the curriculum okay and you'll be down to this tab and if you'll notice, if you scroll down to the bottom, you will see all of those um, areas of learning that I talked about, agriculture, minerals and energy, and outdoor rec and tourism. And you'll notice that there's all the lessons that you can download according to which um, grade level. So for instance, if I wanted to go to, let's just say outdoor rec and tourism, grade four, um, you can go ahead and print that unit. All the worksheets and the resources are there. There's a glossary there. Oh, see, and we're already inviting you to share the curriculum. Um, there's the glossary, the standards, and the essential educator essential things that they will need. That will include like a list of materials that you'll need to um, follow through with the lesson. <clears throat> So if I was going to go down here and I wanted to explore that lesson about Wyoming's spectacular natural wonders, 
you'll notice it's laid out just like a teacher would want all your questions, your objectives, your purpose for the lesson. Um, also, we have different links that you can go to as a teacher and those can be instantly pulled up. So it is very teacher friendly and very user friendly. So with all the materials for the um, Wyoming Stewardship Project, these are free for um, teachers to use. And we've had requests for um, teachers to be able to purchase the printed copies. And those printed copies can be found um, if you go under curriculum here, order curriculum, and then you'll download the order form. It's pretty, you know, self-explanatory. So pretty easy. Um, I'd like to share another program with you that we we're just like all of you at home with children of different ages. And we came up with some very thoughtful activities to share. And um, if you would go under programs, go under family learning and click on that. These lessons were all in mind of elementary age children. And um, all these are educational activities for you and your family to enjoy. It doesn't matter how old the child is. All age levels can join in on this. It's designed to be a family activity. Um, each lesson includes an introduction video, lists of supplies that are needed, a full description of the activity, and a place to print all the lessons. These are all free to all families in Wyoming. As a classroom teacher, you can share the links to the lessons as well. So if I were to um, click on this lesson, it's just kind of fun to get in here and explore yourself. And in this particular lesson, this is one of our kiddos. Um, her mom works for Wyoming Ag in the classroom, so it's kind of neat to see our own little kiddos working alongside us. Maybe it might take Welcome. them. So with that, we will continue to add more and more lessons um, and more resources for you to use over the next few weeks. So please keep checking back on our website as we will be making those additions to that. Um, let your families know that if they send us a picture of their family or your students doing any of our activities, they're going to be entered into a contest to win a $25 Amazon gift card. So we're doing those weekly drawings and you and your family are also eligible to win the Amazon gift card. 
Uh, finally, I just want to share some information regarding our summer plans. We know that everything is up in the air right now, but we do have hope during these uh, difficult times with COVID. Um, we're still planning to host all of our free workshops for teachers. And like I said, they are free. They'll be in 12 communities this summer and you will have an opportunity to work with grade level teams to dive deep into our Wyoming Stewardship Project. You can register by going to, if I go back up here, to the Programs tab under Educator Workshops. I tell you, Stephanie that created this website, it is so easy to navigate through. You'll just come down here and if you'll notice, this is going to be hands-on workshop. There's going to be a local field trip, lunch and snacks, and also UW or PTSB credit is available. And you know how us teachers are, we always want that credit. Um, here are the workshops that you can register for. And then the unit that we'll be focused on is off to the side. And then if you scroll down some more, you click on this icon for you're ready to sign up and it will show you exactly what you need so to do for that so thank you so very much for your time today we're here for you if you um, need any help regarding any of the programs that i have shared this morning uh, you can contact me i guess i can put that in that little chat can i my cell phone number and um, my email thank you again carol for um, hosting me and wyoming ag in the classroom um, I just want to say thank you for all that you are doing for our students in Wyoming, all you teachers, and you are heroes to our kids in this unprecedented time. Thank you. Thank you, Roxy. Um, I love that with the your resources and those that um, Karen and Cher, Sarah shared, it seems like those are things that teachers could just send um, to their parents. And you know, so you tried this for an extra activity or something even. So um, any other questions for Roxy before we move on? Okay, so next I would like to introduce Christy Smith. Um, Christy has over 27 years of experience in education. She's currently an English teacher at Guernsey Sunrise High School. She also trains teachers on instructional items that she uses in her own classroom. And I know um, she's just been using and trying different things since um, our, our school closure started. And um, so I'm just gonna turn it over to Christy because she has um, a few different things she's gonna share that, that she's been using um, with her students. Well, hello everyone. Thank you, Carol, and thank you, Wyoming PBS. It's so nice to see different faces out there and some familiar ones. Yes, I'm currently in the trenches. I'm currently stressed out pretty much every day, uh, trying to take time for self-care as well as build engaging lessons, um, you know, and, and, and really navigate some very uncharted waters. So what I have done is I have put together kind of some things I'm a little bit different than the other two uh, presentations because this is just stuff that I'm really using right now. Um, it's stuff that even up until yesterday, I was actually adding because I was finding other resources. And I'm gonna tell you some pros and cons because as I have rolled these out last week and this week, because this is the end of our second week of online learning, um, I can definitely tell you what's working and what's not. So as we go to the share screen, Roxy, you had me scared there for a little bit. I'm gonna hope that it does that. Okay, so do I go to my screen? So Roxy, did you do stop share? Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna go share. Can you see my screen? I'm gonna see if you guys can. And hopefully I can move this and go to present. Can you guys see a screen? No. Yeah? Now I do. Now you do? Okay. Yes. Um, yes. Wow, this is weird. I love this mem up in the, in the top. We're uh, teaching in 2020. Uh, the semester begins and you're right on track. And because I'm from a ranching family and we rodeo quite a bit, I thought this horse was a good, good metaphor for what we're going through. And then told you're going to 
teach remote learning and you're getting a little stressed out and then actually teaching it's kind of like a stick figure and I thought that was funny. Um, the other thing was I'm a big friends uh, a fan and my girls are both in college. One's a graduate student and one's a senior and and they're even laughing about this online stuff saying I'm not prepared. So uh, the first thing I wanted to show you guys that I've been using is an app called Flipgrid. Um, I don't know if any of you have used it before. I rolled it out actually before we started online learning to really see with my students whether or not they liked it, what, what they could do, what they couldn't do. And so I'm going to show you what it looks like. So here is kind of, I, I, I shouldn't show faces, so, but it's just, that's the one that, that's what the screen looks like that the kids log on. And then when I log on, I can record and I can add some different things. So if I go back to my presentation, I took a screenshot of my first video and you can see that there's some icons up here with the star and the hot and the, and the tape. Um, it, it, it worked out really good if you start it, that means you really liked it. If somebody says something that was like on fire, you could do that. If you wanted to record a response, you could do that. Um, here, uh, one of my students, I had it, he had his sunglasses on, so I didn't feel bad about that. The good thing about it is that you can, um, I could give him, I could watch his video, give him a feedback video, which you can see there, or I could also add comments that they would get in the email. Here's what we said about the Flipgrid, and I, I talked to the kids about this as well. It is asynchronous because you can post it and then they can post and reply whenever they want. Recording of it was easy. I'm, I am really getting used to seeing myself all 50 years of me on screen, but I don't like it. Um, the students liked all of the different icons that they could add uh, to their videos. Um, and I like the fact that the feedback could be written or recorded, but here's some cons. And, and this is one of the things that I didn't like, and I'm glad I rolled it out prior to officially starting. Um, the technology, some of the kids' bandwidths just didn't work. Um, you'd have to be very careful with the students, uh, with your instructions about responses. I work primarily with high school kids and I thought I was doing a pretty good job asking them for some generic, you know, how are you doing? How are you coping? And some of the responses weren't great. Uh, also, we had some siblings figure out how to record on their accounts uh, and those ended up getting posted. And of course, with anything with kids, if there's a vibe or something, you can either positive or negative, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, you have to kind of be careful with that. Uh, Flipgrid, I got the idea when I went to the National Council of Teachers of English. Uh, Kelly Gallagher, I don't know if any of you have heard of him. He's a nationally known uh, teacher. He wrote a book called Read Aside, and he uses it where he takes his classroom and Penny Kettle from the East Coast, and they do a bunch of collaboration, and that's where I, I learned about Flipgrid. Some other platforms that I wanted to talk about was uh, <laughs> Loom, Zoom, and Google Meet, and let me tell you, those have been lots of fun. So in my district, we have been using Zoom quite a bit. Uh, we were also at, uh, told we could use Loom to record videos uh, and post them again in an asynchronous situation. Um, my sister-in-law actually teaches in Montana and they're not allowed to use Zoom in any way, shape or form because of security issues. And I haven't used Google Meet. Um, I was gonna show you Loom was so easy Again, you can just record it. You can see down below. Again, you're, you're kind of open yourself up with the icons because if somebody, I had a student yesterday view one of my videos and give me a thumbs down. I mean, it is what it is in this world, but it was very easy to record it. And then you can see over here where you just copy the link and I posted it to Google Classroom. Um, the kids have given me good feedback about Loom, again, because it's asynchronous, they can watch it on their own time. Um, and they can watch it as many times as they want, because I introduced the Great Gatsby with my juniors. And so I did have some students say, well, I had to watch it a couple of times. So that was a positive there. Another thing that has been amazing to me is these Facebook online groups. And while I'm not a huge fan of social media and I've actually taken some personal time away from social media, which has been awesome. 
Um, there's three groups that I've been utilizing quite a bit. And one is teaching during COVID-19. Um, the other one that's Wyoming is 307 teaching during COVID-19. And both of those you have to ask. And then whoever the, the person is will let you into the group. I have gotten a ton of ideas from teaching during COVID-19 in the 307 because that's specific to Wyoming. And it's really cool to see what other Wyoming teachers are doing out there. And then I am an English teacher by trade. And so there's another one called Creative High School English. This uh, Eight Remote Learning Superpowers by Holly Clark. Um, I put that one up on the big screen. It's from the excuse, uh, Infused Classroom. There's tons of things that you can do. I don't use Seesaw, but I do know some uh, elementary teachers that are doing it. There's Flipgrid again. And what's cool about this source is it tells you the whys, what's good, and if you want to find out any more. So, and I got that information straight off the 307 teaching. So those are some platforms that I've been using uh, to work with my students. I know you can record Zoom, but like I said, once my sister-in-law told me about their district and, and some of the, the security issues, it kind of made me nervous and I liked, I liked going to the other ones. Um, another thing that I've been finding is a huge challenge is how to get, you know, and I, I think every district around is, is in the same spot, is we have to take attendance with these students. How do we know that they're engaging? Are they engaging daily? Are you doing it weekly? Our district is doing it by the week. Uh, which is actually kind of nice because it gives us a couple of days as a teacher to see if they've engaged in any activities and then if they haven't to make those phone calls and then turn them turn them over to administration. Um, two things that I've used that have been really huge and worked incredibly well is using motivation videos, have them watch them, um, give you a five five minute just little blur back. How, how What did this one make you think? Did you like it? Two places that I use even during the school year is Goldcast and Motivation Kings. Eric Thomas, Thomas Bellew, they're just incredible motivational speakers and they can be anywhere from two to five minutes. A con to using those are, again, technology. A lot of our students in our district have a hard time with YouTube. We've blocked it. I think some things have been unblocked, but I, I still see a lot of, of problems with there. The other one that has been amazing with my students is the, the little five word uh, memes or, or just some, kind of like a brain teaser. And so I've been finding these um, on the internet, on Instagram. Like I said, I have two college daughters that kind of help me out. But one thing I did this week um, is I had the students do a six word response to the COVID and what it's like. I don't need hall passes now. Not as nice as I thought. The coronavirus cancels all cool things. I had one student said, I miss my friends and my teachers. You know, I am slowly falling apart now. I mean, and that's not only is that a good way to check in and see if they're engaging, but then you can also say, hey, you know, I'm slowly falling apart. That kid might need some, a little bit more TLC today. And so that's really cool. I also have some fun things like replace, this is next week, so anyone's out there that's in my class watching uh replace one word in a movie title with quarantine that's what it is this bookcase is really cool you can't see it but the book titles uh actually spell out a uh, a a concern about COVID-19 and social distancing and then this one with the figure of speech it's like don't put your eggs in all, all one basket um and they have to see how many they can find so that's been a really positive thing with the check-ins. And if the kids haven't answered that fun question by like Wednesday, that's a good time that you can connect with them and follow your district's protocols with attendance. Last of all that I have found, and I have posted this as a nice to know activity. Um, I cannot believe how many of our authors, nationally known authors are doing read alouds. And I think that has to do with, as I read, you know, with the copyright laws, if they're reading it themselves, like Jason Reynolds, I love him, um, then it's okay. So what I have done is they've done, these authors have done their read alouds through either Facebook Live, Twitter, and or Instagram. And most of them I've found on Instagram. Jason Reynolds, actually, I have it. Oh gosh, I can't see with y'all's deal. I'll just leave it there. 
Um, he's been doing his, uh, one of his novels every day on Instagram live from 10 to 11. Um, and he videos while he's doing it. I know Matt De La Pena, who actually came to the University of Wyoming for the literacy conference last year, he's reading uh, Mexican White Boy Out Loud. So um, these author read alouds are a nice thing. Uh, I've been putting them up again as the, you know, if you are done with everything else, here's something you can do. And um, they've really enjoyed, uh, the ones that have watched it have really enjoyed it. So that's, that's just kind of um, some things that I have found that's been working in my classroom. A little bit shorter, I guess, than the other two, but I'm open um, for questions. What I can do, I think, is I will share this PowerPoint with Carol, and then, or it's just a Google slide, and Carol, you can put it out however you want, because it also has my contact information on there, and I can stop sharing because no one wants to see that picture. And um, that's like I said, that's about all I have. Those are the things that have been working. I will tell you. One thing as an educator in the trenches with each and every one of you out there, this has been unprecedented. I, I've been in the classroom 27 years. I, I miss my kids on a daily basis. When I've got to Zoom with them, they've laughed because I've cried. Um, you know, I've gotten everything from Mrs. Smith, show me your ranch to let me show you my dog. And, and these are high schoolers, you know. I just really have to commend the education system in Wyoming, the administrators, the superintendents, how they have all come together and somehow directed us to find a way to put all of this online for kids and focus on what's best for kids. I, I'm completely amazed and so proud. So um, I just wanna thank you and thank you, Carol and uh, Wyoming PBS. So oh, thanks, Christy. So um, if you're okay, Christy, I think you said it, we will post your PowerPoint on the Wyoming PBS website. And yes, this, this whole um, Zoom meeting has been recorded. And so that will be on um, the Wyoming PBS website as well. And any of you can email me, um, and if you have more questions or if you um, want me to direct you to that, it's wyomingpbs.org will be that website that it will be on. And um, also, while I'm talking about that, I have a newsletter that I send out um, more often um, now. And if you're not on that list and would like to be on it, you could also, um, send me an email and I will add you to my mailing list. Um, and with that, are there any questions for any of our presenters or would anyone else like to share anything that they found that um, is working really well um, or challenges that you would like to share and, and see if anybody else is having the same challenges? Hello, Carol. This is uh, Andrew Young. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Andrew. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Andrew Young. I teach physics and astronomy at Casper College. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in the chat uh, a link. So hopefully you can see that in the chat. Uh, basically, there's a working group with the American Association of Physics Teachers, and we've been getting together about once a week or so to discuss various issues of exam pedagogy, how to conduct labs, uh, how to you know talk about office hours and asynchronous versus synchronous, all these little different issues that come with the transition to remote online teaching. And uh, if you're interested, the link is in the chat to a Google website that has all the Zoom meetings and past um, discussions regarding all these various topics and such. So if you're a science teacher or if you know science teachers who need more resources or ideas or activities, uh, I would encourage you to see and get a chance to see the website. And if you or anybody else uh, might have any questions regarding science and physics and astronomy issues, I also posted my email address there for easy contact. So uh, that's all I wanted to say. So feel free to check out the website or email me and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks for being on today and sharing that. 
Anyone else want to share or questions? So we're we're getting our contact information there in the chat for anybody. Um, I just again um, I want to say thank you to um, the the three pe presenters that joined me today. Um, that was really great information. And um, well, one more thing before we stop. What about challenges? Anybody want to share any challenges they're facing right now? Oh, I will. Um, <laughs> and and it, I think it's something, you know, a lot of our parents, and this is something that I've, I talked about with my administration yesterday in our PLC. I have spent a lot of time talking to parents and of older kids, and I don't think the parents are mad when I'm calling. I think they are lacking information and direction. And it's because I think we forget that we as a school, administrators, down to the teachers, down to everybody, secretaries, we provide a sense of structure and, and normalcy for our kids. And parents don't know how to set up that structure, I don't think anymore, because they're working. And, or they're not working and they're worried about paying their bills. And so one of the frustrations that I'm finding is that I have a lot of parents going, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know how to get them. I don't know how to get them motivated. I don't. And our administration was super proactive yesterday and put together a, a really cool uh, uh, a Google Doc that we're kind of as teachers adding some of the things, just tips for parents to have out there and to help them you know, how do you set up a schedule? And don't just think that because your kid's in high school that you shouldn't check their work because the work that we're getting submitted is way bad. Like it is so subpar, I couldn't even, you know. And I think it's because the parents are just overwhelmed and that education piece to help our parents and getting that out. I'm just really proud of, of Platt 2 and Guernsey for what they've done to be proactive in that part. Thanks, Christy. Carol, this is Dave Barkin. How are you? Good. Um, I was interested in in this, uh, seeing what resources you had. But as a as a former educator, I began teaching online in the early '90s, when everyone was on dial up. Um, when I began teaching, I did have, and I taught chemistry online, both uh, lab and lecture, and I've done it. I quit probably about four years ago. The advantage I had was that I was able to have my own software and server. I did my own materials. One of the things that we're fighting right now, as you know, Carol, we have a sixth grader and a fourth grader that Penny and I are homeschooling. Well, not homeschooling, we're online schooling, but it's almost the same thing in my mind. The big thing that all the platforms are wonderful and all the information is wonderful, but Access to the teacher when needed is probably one of the most difficult things that I'm dealing with. I'm able to teach the mathematics to, to both kids. And obviously, Penny is a former educator. When I was teaching online, one of my major goals was to make sure that I was available to answer questions live to students. Now, we're talking about doing this when it was dial-up. And I was able to answer their questions in real time with a video when they would ask questions. And I think, I think the teachers need to realize that all these platforms become confusing, especially to the parents. Um, and I've been dealing with software forever, but it's still difficult for me. I appreciate everything that all the, all the platforms and all the information that's out there. But the teacher needs to guide the students more from what I see in what their expectations are and answering questions for students. And I'm just gonna leave it at that because um, it's not a criticism. I know this was thrown into a lot of people in a hurry and they're trying to find the right platform and everything else, but the teacher isn't quite what I'm seeing, isn't quite where they need to be on all these um, online learning. Thanks, David. Christy, do you want to 
Yeah, I was going to jump in there. Um, one of the things, again, I, I'm, I'm kind of talking about what's working in our district, but we put out, our, our administrators put out a Google sheet again, and it said when the teachers were scheduling live Zoom meetings, and that's so we wouldn't overlap. Um, I teach 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, but I have friends, of course, that teach the lower grades. I know that some of our elementary teachers are meeting bi-weekly with the students and no, that's not enough. I know that I have had um, Zoom meetings where I've had one kid show up, I've had five kids show up, I've never had more than that. Um, I do have what I call office hours where the kids can phone me. I live on a ranch, so they all laugh because I have a, I have a landline and they think that's hilarious, but um, I'm like, you won't get me on my cell. Um, and I have tried to make that available but I can definitely understand your frustration because um, I know we had a teacher say in a meeting the other day that she was helping a kid at nine o'clock at night. And I was just amazed at that because I kind of shut her down about 430. But um, I think that that would definitely, you know, maybe a schedule would be a better idea so that the parents knew that Christy was online via email, via phone, whatever from this time so that you could help them at that. Thanks. Christy, I'm just gonna say I had the advantage that I taught college. So if they didn't show up, that was their problem. Unfortunately, you guys don't have that, that same uh, comfort. Um, and in addition to what you were saying, the students that showed up in my lectures, which I would actually do lectures several times a week online live, um, it was always the same students that would show up. And they were the, one, they were the ones that didn't need the help. So that's the way, that's the way college is. So the, yeah, I think the one thing, and, and our district's really small, and, and again, we've, we've given out uh, devices to our students. We provided hotspots for the families that don't have internet. Um, but the one thing that we're finding, and I, I definitely see this as a problem, is you might have three kids, but one device in a family. Or, and that, that sharing of devices has been a challenge. And then a hotspot only has so much internet. Um, so, you know, making sure that that internet is kind of equitably distributed. And then, you know, you think about our kids with, with unique needs. Um, are they getting the counseling services that they need? Or, you know, and if, if you've got some kids with those special needs um, emotionally and, and academically, it's, it's hard to provide that equitable service and, and do those touch, you know, touch base with them because you're not getting to see them all the time. Thanks, Christy. Um, I see we're seeing in the chat room that Casper Planetarium has lessons that they can share and the contact information is there. Um, again, let us know how we can help you, um, educators. What else can we do at Wyoming PBS? Um, it's more trainings, more specific trainings. I'm available to do one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions with our um, PBS learning media resources. If you have teachers that are looking for a certain content, um, that I did a our learning media, PBS learning media training a couple weeks ago. And that recording, if you didn't watch that, is also on the Wyoming PBS website. And I'm happy to do one of those with small groups. I've done um, teachers that have contacted me and said, I, I just need this. Can you, and we, I jumped on Zoom with her. It was a science teacher and we looked around and found what she was looking for um, really easily. So. Please let us know how we can help you. And um, any last comments from our presenters before we close? Nope. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good weekend. It was good to see everyone.